Hi, my name is Bernie, and I live in this here minivan full time. So, power is ever so important. And this little baby was sent to me to review, um, but I did confirm that I could give an honest review before I accepted. So that's about to happen. The honest review is about to happen. Look how cute and adorable. Oh, it's like a little baby. It's so cute. Okay, what else is in here? The instructions. Very well padded and everything. So it's probably going to get to you safe and sound if you're going to plug it into the wall for the solar panel, which is awesome. And your 12 volt. 12 volts? I think that's right. So you can plug it into your car charger. And this just goes with this. This part gets plugged into that part and then you plug it into the wall. And that's it, that's all that's in the box. So it looks like it's a max of 60 watts that you can actually put in, like with solar or whatever. So that's good to know. And we'll go over the rest of the specifications later, but we've done our unboxing now. So this is the 300, no, the EBL 300. It's rated for 330 watts. Um, the peak is 600 watts. The peak just means um, a lot of things when you first plug them in, there'll be a surge that's like higher than what their wattage is going to be pulling like after the initial startup. And so if you have a 600 peak, it means that like you can have that surge go up to 600, but then it's only gonna let it do that for a second. I don't know exactly how long, but it'll just let that do that peak just for a second, a few seconds, and then the wattage of whatever you're using needs to be under 330 watts after the initial peak, which can go as high as 600. It can store 288 watts. So it's a lot of numbers, but basically, you want to make sure that whatever you're drawing, whatever you're going to plug in is going to be under 330 watts and then it will charge, discharge up to 288 hours before you need to recharge it. And actually the manual says that you don't want to really go below 20%, that once you've hit 20% of its capacity, which is 288, I am not a math girl, so you'll have to do the math on that one, but once you get to 20% of that 288, you're going to want to recharge it. Um, and that is actually a better number than a lot of them. A lot of the power stations, like you don't want to go below 50%. So being able to use 80% of the capacity of the battery is actually a pretty good number. So now that we've got the main specs out of the way, let me tell you what I like about it. And thank goodness I actually really did like it. <laughs> this is my first like request for a review. And I did confirm that it was okay, you know, even if I didn't like it, to be honest about it. But I was really afraid that I wouldn't like it. I didn't want my first review to be a negative one. And thankfully, it is a good one. I actually really, really like this little guy. He doesn't hold a lot, so he's not going to be good for like a main power station if you're living off of power stations as I am. But he's amazing for a backup station. And he's amazing if you are just going to go camping for like a week or a weekend or whatever and you just want to make sure you can keep your phones charged and your lights charged, kind of low drainage things. Amazing for that. But he doesn't hold an awful lot, so you just want to keep that in mind when you're sort of figuring out whether he's going to work for you. But even though he doesn't hold a lot, he is actually my current favorite power station because he just works so much better than the ones that I already have. Why am I referring to it as a he? Who knows? Why not? We like to, what's the word? Anthropomorphize? Anthropomorphify. <laughs> I can't say it. You know, treat things like they're living beings around here. Why not? It's more fun that way. So my favorite things about this station, number one, it, there's pass-through charging which is incredibly important. You can charge it while you're discharging it at the same time. Not all power stations do that. If it's something you think you're gonna need, you definitely wanna check into that. It's a very handy feature. Number two, this display. So the display will tell you what your percentage is, and most power stations will do that, but it will also tell you how much wattage is going out at any given time and how much wattage is coming in at any given time. And that is actually a feature that I didn't know was going to be something I cared about when I first started this whole journey, but it is a really important feature and it's very helpful to see, particularly when you plug in your solar panels, how much charge is coming in. So it can tell you if you need to like adjust your solar panels at all to get a better charge. It'll tell you how much is going out. So it's very handy to see how much wattage whatever appliance you're using at the time is actually taking. I'll be able to tell when the coffee is done because the wattage 
output or draw from the machine will just drop dramatically. See, and there it goes. Okay, now that's actually pretty cool how it goes all the way down to zero watts. Like, does the AC inverter not actually use? Because my other power station, if you just have the AC inverter on, it's using 10 to 12 watts just without even having anything being used on the machine. It's just the inverter is, is drawing that. I don't know if this is an actual correct thing, but I'm going to assume that it is and that it actually, you can have the AC inverter on and it's not automatically charging or using 10 to 12 watts. It only uses watts when it's actually being, you know, when something's actually drawing power from it. That's pretty freaking cool, actually. Point for EBL. And I got myself a nice cup of coffee. So I very much appreciate that about it. I also really like the fact that it has wireless charging. This came in so handy for me when I just went through an issue where my phone was not like recognizing the wire, you know? So I was able to wireless charge it until I could get my, ch my phone in to get fixed, which was kind of a lifesaver for a few days, not gonna lie. I didn't know how handy it would be, but it is very, very handy. Apparently it does not show you the outgoing charge when it's wireless. Just FYI. It also charges pretty quickly. I unfortunately didn't think to record like how fast or time, how fast it charged. So I can't give you specific numbers. I do apologize for that, but I can give you guesstimates. Yesterday it was around 76%. I plugged it into my 60 watt uh, solar panels and it only took a couple of hours to get up to 99%, which is fast. I mean, it's fast compared to the ones that I already have anyway. It also has fast charging, like legit fast charging. I think that my phone charges faster on this than anything else, including plugging it into the car, other power stations or any of my little power bricks. I don't feel like it went as fast through wireless, but if you do it through the USB-C, very fast charging. It's also very, very portable. It's only like, I think, shoot, I'll have to look at the thing, but I think it's like 13 pounds. No, it doesn't feel like it's 13 pounds. I don't know, I'll have to look at the thing to find out exactly what the poundage is, but it's very portable. It's just a little baby like that TikTok. <laughs> But it's a powerful baby. It's a beast baby. So it's something you could just like throw on the back of your bike if you were gonna like go to the beach for the day or something. Like it would just, it's just a lot easier to use um, when you're gonna be out and about portableness. Is that a word? It is now. So it is my favorite power station for portableness, for fast charging, both output and input, for the display that it gives you, and for the option to wireless charge. It's not perfect, nothing is perfect, <laughs> so you can't expect this to be perfect. Part of it is just pr a personal preference. I don't love the orange. I don't really understand why so many power stations do this, like we're in a construction zone. Um, there's a lot of us using this in our homes, like this is my home. So, I mean, I wish it was just a little more aesthetically pleasing. Um, this flavor of orange is not my favorite, but that's not really enough to actually knock a point off it or, or anything. The other thing I don't like about it might actually affect you though. So it has this thing where it will hibernate. So if you are draw, if you're using something on it that is drawing less than five watts for more than three hours, it goes into hibernation mode, which you wouldn't think is that big of a deal, but it kind of is. So I had to use it as a backup for my refrigerator battery one night. And it did get me through most of the night, but I woke up like 3 a.m. or something and saw that it was off, which is what prompted me to figure out what was going on. And I found out about that hibernation thing. So a refrigerator, one of these like uh, camping refrigerators, like 12 volt refrigerators will not run all of the time. What they do is they like, I guess the compressor or whatever it is, the engine that actually, you know, makes it cold will turn on, get it to a good temperature and then turn off and then just use the insulation factor to keep that cold until the next time it needs to kick on. And so when it's not on, when that engine part is not on or the motor or the compressor or whatever the correct word for it is, is not on, it's not drawing any watts at all. And sometimes that can go on for more than three hours. So three hours of the compressor not turning on, which means that there's no wattage being pulled out of here during that time, and it will go into hibernation mode. So like it, 
let's say that the refrigerator needed to turn on at the three and a half hour mark, it couldn't because this has gone into hibernation mode. Additionally, I have a fan that I use every night that only draws about four watts of power. So you turn your fan on at night, you lay down, you think you're good to go for the night, and then you wake up in the middle of the night sweating. Hot. What the what? The air is still. That is not supposed to be happening because the thing went into hibernation like a bear. I don't like that. I like to know that, you know, whatever I turned on is gonna be still on when I go back to it. So I would not use this for anything that you're gonna want like an extended period of time. You know, you don't want whatever it is to turn off. But because I use this mostly as a backup, it's not gonna really bother me that much. Um, and the good definitely outweighs the bad in that regard for me. It's just something I'm going to keep in mind. I'm not gonna try and use this to power my fans overnight, and I'm definitely not gonna try and use this to power my refrigerator at any time because this is just too much of a chance that it's just not gonna work and then I'm gonna lose everything in my fridge, including my coffee creamer, and we cannot have that now, can we? That is like literally the only thing that I would take a knockoff for this. And I'm sure that there's a reason for it. It's probably something to do with protecting the battery. So I hate to even take a knockoff for that point, but my other power stations don't do that. So I don't think it's an absolutely necessary feature. And it can be frustrating. Thankfully, I caught my fridge before it ruined my coffee creamer, so we're all good. Right now, this is um, about, well, it's like listed on Amazon as 200, but you know how Amazon always does that thing where then you can like add a coupon or whatever, like trying to trick you into thinking that you're getting a good deal. But anyway, it's a thing. It's listed as 200, but you can put in like a redemption code thing, get $50 off. I would imagine that number fluctuates. I don't know an awful lot about various power stations and what they charge, so I'll just have to leave that up to you about whether or not you feel like that's a fair price, but it feels like a fair price to me, considering the fact that it is almost perfect minus that one little caveat and um, it's made by EVL which is a respected name brand as far as batteries are concerned I don't know if it makes other things but I only have experience with this and then like the little rechargeable batteries which I almost always use just EVL because I think they're the best as far as rechargeable batteries is concerned so I respect and trust the name EVL um, which does make it seem like a worthy investment to me. So in the end, do I recommend this? Yes, 100%. For a small, portable, reliable, fast charging station, I, in my experience, it can't be beat. Um, I haven't used a lot of other ones though, so you're gonna have to take my, my recommendation with a grain of salt. Um, but as somebody who lives off of my power station, I would not have power at all without my power stations. So they are a lifeline for me. And as somebody who lives like that, I can tell you that I very much recommend this and am super grateful to have it in my arsenal. Arsenal? Sure, why not? And thank you very much for watching my review. I hope that I answered all of your questions about it. Um, and if I didn't, just let me know down below and I will try and answer more questions. I am not a professional about any of this kind of thing, but I will do the very best that I can. Y'all have an amazing day. I really appreciate you checking out this review and I will see you soon. Bye.